Hey Familia, Igni here and welcome back to another scuffed card review coming at you live from a hotel room. Uh, since the last time we did a card review, tons of new cards have been revealed. I meant to record one yesterday, but that didn't work out. I was busy, so I released uh, one of the pre-recorded videos I had in store instead. But now I have some free time. Let's talk about the new cards. First of all, we have... Traditional Sorcerer, 7 play point, 2 2 Silver, Runecraft Follower. Fanfare, summon a Paper Shikigami. Whenever an allied Paper Shikigami or Demonic Shikigami comes into play, give it Ward. Subtract 0 from the cost of this card. Uh, spell Boost, subtract 1 more. So, the Shikigami Runecraft Spell Boost stuff, I think, is actually really coming together. Uh, just flood the board, give all your Shikigamis insane effects like Ward, plus stats, rush, etc., etc., and then, of course, when they get destroyed, they spell boost the other Shikigami cards in your hand, so it's like it never stops. The one thing that I'm a little sad about regarding uh, Shikigami stuff in the upcoming expansion is that Ryo is rotating out uh, as this set comes in. So it's going to make the spell boosting have to, I guess, be more honest in a way, uh, straight from actual spells and Shikigami stuff in your hand instead of just having Ryo do it all for you. But still, uh, this card in particular is pretty cool. Uh, you get the sh Paper Shikigami, it gets Ward immediately. It's going to be really easy to get this down to zero, I reckon, uh, given how much uh, the Shikigami stuff is going to spell boost all the stuff in your hand, especially, like, uh, the spells you get also are really good, like summons and, uh, you know, just everything works into each other in a nice way. So, yeah, I'm pretty hopeful about this deck. Maybe this will bring spell boost back into rotation uh, in a way that doesn't make it overblown and unlimited because it's bringing spell boost back in a different way. Uh, yeah, this card in particular, you can get like 0 play point, 2, 2, and then a 1, 3 with Ward, so that's pretty cool. Uh, moving on, Crimson Meteor Storm, Silver Spell for Runecraft, 6 play points. Deal 3 damage to all enemy followers. If you have 20 cards or less in your deck, put a Crimson Sorcery into your hand. I don't know, man. Uh, historically, the 20 cards or less stuff hasn't really seen play outside of Unlimited, and I don't think this is going to really... Sorry, not Unlimited, um, outside of Arena, take 2 and stuff. And I don't think that this is going to change with this card. Uh, good AoE clear, but it's a bit expensive for a turn where you're not doing much else unless you, you know, spell boost stuff to zero and then play stuff after the Crimson Meteor Storm or what have you. But still, uh, I'm not super convinced on this. It's a super heavy spell that might not even clear the threats at that stage in the game. So, yeah, not convinced about this one. Uh, hopefully I'm proven wrong. I'm glad that Rune's getting more AoE stuff. But I think I like uh, Carol better than this, because it's a body that also has an additional effect that also clears stuff on the Evo. Uh, yeah, this one is more like, I don't know. Again, 20 cards or less seems like an arena thing more than anything. Um, I've been wanting for Rune to get AoE back a little bit since the loss of Nova Flare, but I think this still might be just a bit too pricey. Charming Gentle Mouse, 222 Runecraft, uh, Rune, what am I saying? Runecraft Bronze Follower. Fanfare Enhanced 5, summon a Charming Gentle Mouse. Give plus 1, plus 1 to all allied Charming Gentle Mice. Enhance 8, summon 2, and give plus 2, plus 2 instead. Okay. So on 5, you're getting a 5 play point, 6, 6 of stats. On 8, you're getting a 8 play points, uh, 12, 12 of stats, right? And on 10, you're getting a 10 play point. Oh boy, this is too much math. Anyway, it's a lot of stats. Uh, it's too much math for this late in the day after I've done a bunch of stuff today, okay? Relax. Don't roast me in the comments too hard. <laughs> anyway, um, I was going to say that this card doesn't really fit in RuneCraft in that it doesn't really fit like the spell boost archetype or really any archetype that RuneCraft has, but it's kind of just solid stats, to be honest with you. Maybe in formats that aren't constructed... Or maybe if they find ways to, to make use of this later down the, the road. I think it's a pretty cool card, though. It's a lot of stats. 2, 2, 2, first of all, is fine, right? And then 5, you're getting 2, 3, 3s. Like, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't know, man. I'm, I hope that this sees play. I feel like if... Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking about Conjuring Force for some reason. This reminds me of that for some reason. Ah, yeah, it doesn't really fit into what I think RuneCraft is trying to do next set, but I do like the card, and I think it's solid. Um, again, maybe not in Constructed, maybe in other formats. Hopefully this does see play, though, because I think it's super cool. Twin Sword Master, 
Swordcraft Officer Silver, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. If an allied commander card is in play, gain the ability to evolve for zero evolution points. Evolved can attack two times per turn. Uh, it's just a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, hmm. Mm, mm, I don't know. I don't think this is going to be an instrumental card in Swordcraft next set. Uh, I feel like we're missing Kage Mitsu still, right? Yeah, so we don't really know the uh, the crux around which Swordcraft is uh, built in this upcoming set, but this just seems kind of mediocre. Uh, you can get a free Evolve. The, the Evolve, though, it's just not very good stats for the can attack two times per turn effect. Yeah, I'm not really convinced about this one. Might be good as a way for Swordcraft to deal with wider boards, because they don't really have a, a bevy of AoE, but still, I think this is just mediocre at best. Maybe there's some combo I'm missing here, though. Oh, that's it for this set here. Moving along. Box of Puppets. Three play point silver amulet for Portal Craft. Countdown one. Fanfare. Transform an enemy follower or amulet into a Lococo's teddy bear. Last words. Summon a Lococo's teddy bear. This is a pretty good amulet. Premium removal for anything followers or amulets um transformation effects are really good because these uh they sidestep a lot of stuff that would otherwise be immune and the fact that this also affects amulet and by, by the way uh, when i say otherwise be immune i mean like seraph and primal giant which may not be super relevant but still and it's essentially like soft this is gonna sound really stupid soft hard removal um yeah and the fact that this affects amulets as well is really good because you know uh Ilana, right? <laughs> That's a thing that is even seeing play in rotation right now a little bit. Uh, and of course, you get the Lococo's Teddy Bear puppet as well. Uh, and you summon something. Of course, your Lococo's Teddy Bear will give them uh, a puppet, which is not ideal. But still, uh, this is really great removal that gives you a puppet as well and uh, gives you a follower that you can use too. So not bad. Moving along, we have Creeping Madness here, Bloodcraft Gold Spell, one play point. Deal one damage to your leader, draw a card. If an allied natural and great tree is in play, restore two defense to your leader and recover one play point. Really great card. Really, really, really great card um, for self-ping Bloodcraft here. Although I just don't feel like self-ping Bloodcraft from the cards that have been revealed thus far really have the reach to become a viable deck. Maybe that'll change. Um given a few more releases. I think that the card art here, I think, is Sharon Zaya, which would really benefit from a card like this, obviously. So yeah, um, the card itself, though, despite not fitting in an archetype that... Uh, or rather, despite seemingly made for an archetype that I don't think has all the pieces yet, uh, is individually just really strong by itself. Deal one damage to your leader, get a self-paying draw a card, recover a play point, restore two defense. It's just, it does everything. Uh, and it's... Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Moving on, Lucius Vampire Slayer, 1 play point, 1, 2. If there are at least 4 enemy cards in play, gain the ability to evolve for 0 evolution points. Enhance 7, gain plus 5, plus 5, and Bane. Another sort of anti-wide board thing, which I've seen a few in this set so far. Evolve, destroy an enemy follower with X defense or less, X equals 20 minus your leader's defense. Solid card. I mean, just a 1 play point well stated thing with an additional effect that can 2 for 1 on Evolve, and it can evolve for free. Um, yeah, really solid. I think this card is very good. Very good. I don't think the Enhanced 7 is really worth it, but yeah, the Fanfare uh, for that cheap, plus the Evolve 2 for 1, yeah, solid card. Again, though, I feel like Bloodcraft, I don't know. I can't really picture what kind of deck Bloodcraft is piecing together right now. Runecraft Natura uh, Follower here, Bronze, Arrow Elementalist, 2 2 1. Rush, Fanfare, randomly put a copy of an Allied Amulet this match into your hand. If the Amulet is a natural great tree, gain plus 2 plus 2. Great card. Great, 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 great card for Natural Runecraft, which is a deck that desperately needs to support. Um, I mean, if you play Natural Runecraft, this is pretty much always getting you Natural and Great Tree, right? And that means you're always getting a 4 3 rush for two play points, which is amazing. Um, if you're not playing this in Natura, maybe you're getting uh, an Earth Sigil. 
which could be interesting, like getting back Silent Lab or something like that. But I really think that this is the support that Natural Runecraft needs, and uh, I'm excited to see it being printed. All right, more cards to go. Tons more to go. Curse Crafter. Runecraft 5 play point one one gold follower. Fanfare summon a demonic Shikigami. That's the 3-3. Three, three. Uh, randomly put two different followers with spell boost from your deck into your hand. Evolve, summon a paper Shikigami. Okay. Yeah, this card is amazing. Um, it's a... Uh, yeah. A draw two spell boost five play point card. It's like a Fate's Hand, right? That also summons 4-4 four, four worth of stats. And can summon another... 1-3 after getting a plus 2, plus 2 with full Evo stats. Yeah, card is amazing and probably going to be the glue that holds the Shikigami deck together. Moving along. Oh, we have Demon Caller, 8.11 Runecraft card. Fanfare, summon a Demonic Shikigami. Whenever an allied paper Shikigami or Demonic Shikigami comes into play, give it plus 1 attack and rush. Uh, spell boost, subtract 1 from the cost of this card, of course. Uh, this one... Uh... I mean, it's kind of like the uh, the Runecraft Shikigami version of um, what you call it, uh, Acceleradium. How could I forget that card? <laughs> yeah, Acceleradium. I think this could be pretty good. It's quite pricey for the spell boost in terms of what you're getting, but you are getting a one one whiff of three three. No, a four three rush already. So I think it's worth it. Plus the fact that it gives your uh, Shikigami's rush is really good because that means it can um, give you way way too much trading potential and of course every trade you take with the shikigami spell boosts your hand even further which really goes towards making uh, your kuon uh zero cost right so this is going to be i think pretty instrumental in making your shikigami uh, be able to have a impact on the uh, on the board the turn it's played and then of course like i said the last word spell boost is just going to stack and stack and stack and then you play kuon and you basically just have infinite board and tempo. So yeah, good card, I think. Unless there's another rush giver that I'm missing or I forgot about that's cheaper. Talisman Disciple, 101 Ward, Fanfare Choose, put a paper Shikigami or a demonic Shikigami into your hand. I think this is the most underwhelming Shikigami card thus far, by far. Um, reminds me of like Temple Bear. I don't know, man. And this one is, uh, yeah. I don't think I would want to pay full price for Paper Shikigami or Demonic Shikigami in the first place, because a lot of the other ones are spell boosts and summon them instead of putting them to your hand, so this one's uh, probably not good. The Bloodcraft Eternal, no, Ultimate Coliseum Contender, Aragavi the Berserker, 4-4-3. Fanfare, if your leader has taken damage during your turn at least seven times this match, gain the ability to evolve for zero evolution points. At the start of your opponent's turn, if your leader took damage during your previous turn, restore three defense to your leader. Uh, evolve, deal four damage to an enemy follower. If you have at least four play points, use four play points and deal eight damage to all other followers instead. Okay, this card is incredibly good. Incredibly good. Um, first of all, free evolve, of course. Second of all, defense restoration. Third of all, two for one. Fourth of all, the potential uh, revelation on a stick effect, although I think that's probably going to be less relevant. That's, um, I mean, it's it's really good. It's really good, but it is quite late into the game. So I think this is kind of a, a trend with Bloodcraft so far and the reveals in that it's, it's really solid cards for controlling the game into the late game, but I don't really see the finisher um, in this deck yet. I think that's yet to be seen. Maybe you run Sharon Zaya or, you know, um, the uh, the seven play point guy that heals you and draws you cards and discards stuff to ping damage you. The name escapes me at the moment. I'm tired, okay? Anyway, yeah, but this card individually is incredibly powerful with tons of effects, making it very flexible and very, very good uh, defensively. But, yeah. I just really want to see what the, the finisher for this self-ping blood in rotation is going to be. I think uh, Unlimited Flora's Blood is going to really enjoy a lot of these cards. Maybe not Aragavi, but definitely the one play points that we looked at just now. Um, yeah. I wish this had a finisher in rotation. Maybe you can try, like I said, Sharon Zaya or Cradle of Dark Divinity. That's the card I'm thinking of. Uh, man, I wish this deck would be playable because I really love this card. Okay, moving along. 
Are there any more in the set? Nope. La di da. Here we go. Cougar Pelt Warrior, 3 3 2 Silver for Blood. Rush Fanfare, if your leader has taken damage during your turn at least seven times in this match, summon two Cougar Pelt Warriors. Very good card. I mean, 3 3 2 Rush is already all right. And then Fanfare, summon two more for three play points uh, in a self ping deck, where that's your whole goal to, begwit, uh, to begin with. Yeah, this card is very powerful and will probably be run in any form of self ping blood. Moving along, Sentry Gate, one play point, count down three, neutral amulet, bronze, fanfare enhance five, destroy an enemy follower. When an enemy follower evolves during your opponent's turn, deal two damage to that follower. Pretty good card, honestly. Honestly, it's a pretty good card. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> to be honest, it's 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 cheap. It deals damage to their evil, making your trades easier. Um, the one thing that obviously is concerning is that it doesn't... It's it's kind of a low impact, despite being a pretty good effect. And especially if it's, like, later in the game, this is probably not going to be something you want to be playing. I mean, you, get, you have the enhanced fire effect at least, right? Well, one thing I like about this card, though, is that it acts as an amulet for... Um, what's her name? The New Haven Legendary... Uh, that can evolve then, which is pretty neat. Um, I don't know. I think this is a... I said this is a pretty good card, but the more I think about it, the less I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm changing my mind as I'm doing the review. That's what's happening right now. Uh, yeah. it's uh, Five to destroy one enemy follower is kind of low impact. Playing this later on... Playing this early... You're not even killing anything. I think the effect is cool. I think the effect is super cool. It's cool that it stacks, too. And it's cool that it works with amulet stuff. It would be cool if uh, Garuda, Ruler of the Sky, is still in rotation, so you have more cheap one play point stuff. No, but I guess you couldn't even combo it, right? Because of the enhanced five. So it doesn't even work there. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. The more I think about it, the less I like this card. I don't think this card is going to see play. <laughs> uh, I think my initial uh, positive reaction to this was just because I liked the effect... But, yeah, I'm probably, probably, this is not going to see play. Again, the you, you're wasting a card slot. You're wasting a draw, importantly, on something that won't even kill an enemy follower. Although it does make their trades way more awkward, of course. Um, but, I don't know. I just don't think you're going to run this. Okay, moving on. Moving on. See, I have to think about that one, because it does make their trades more awkward, which could be really impactful, because their Evo uh, thing might not survive then, and then you have free tempo the turn after. Oh, I'm flip-flopping a lot on this one. Okay, come back to me later. But for now, I'm thinking, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Boar Pelt Warrior, 222 Silver Bloodcraft Follower. Fanfare, Vengeance is not active for you. Deal one damage to your leader, then activate Vengeance until the end of the turn, even if your leader's defense is more than 10. Not bad, man. Cheap, one-turn Vengeance activator that forwards your self-ping plan. And this could be really good for activating Vengeance for one turn. Say on turn five, if you're going first, you play the Boar Pelt, then you play Urias. Hey, not bad, right? Yeah, this card is pretty good. I like it a lot. Moving on. How does Fulminous Demon's effect work if Vengeance is activated for you until the end of the turn? Since Vengeance is active, the deal one damage to all enemies instead if Vengeance is active for you, effect will activate. Oh, cool. Well, that's good to know. Although I don't think anybody's going to play Fulminous Demon still. All right. Are these the last few? Are these la Oh, nope. There's still quite a few. Okay, these are the last batch, I think. These three. Right. Demon, oh sorry, Bear Pelt Warrior, Bloodcraft, dude, he's ripped, 3-3-3, three, 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 Fanfare, deal one damage to both leaders, if at least two cards are added to your hand from your deck this turn, repeat once, last words, restore two defense to your leader, evolve, last words, restore four defense to your leader, reminds me a lot of Floros, hey, it does remind me a lot of Floros, good on curve stat, of course, what's really good about this, obviously, is that also it curves right into Aragavi, so you deal one damage to both leaders, and you are Agave, and you can restore a lot of defense if you're doing a lot of self-pinging, so that's good. Uh, if at least two cards were added to your hand from your deck this turn, which is good on turn four, then, because you can play the one-turn card, 
uh, sorry, the one play point spell rather, into Bear Pelt Warrior, then plus your natural draw, you'd be able to repeat the effect again uh, for more self-pinging goodness. Again, where's the finisher, right? Where's the finisher? Solid card, where's the finisher? Curves well into Aragavi, great, great stats, good effect, where's the finisher? Antelope Pelt Warrior, 2 3 3. Okay, that's a stat line. Uh, Bloodcraft Bronze here. Fanfare of your leader has taken damage during your turn six times or less in this match. Gain the following effect at the end of your turn. Deal one damage to your leader and this follower. Okay, six times or less. Okay, okay. So this becomes a 3 2 on 2. That's still good. If your leader has taken damage during your turn at least seven times, at the end of your turn, restore three defense to your leader. Hold up. Hold up. Solid card. Really great stat line. Self pings. Uh, yeah. And it can heal you. And is a cheap, good stat follower. Okay. Okay. Again, another great card for this archetype that has no win condition. <laughs> please. Please. Uh, moving along. Steadfast Samurai, 2 on 1, Gold Swordcraft Officer, Fanfare Enhance 5, Evolve this Follower, Clash, Reduce Damage to this Follower to 0 until the end of the turn, Storm on Evo, okay, uh, Give your Leader the following effect until this Follower release play, Reduce Damage from Spells and Effects to your Leader to 0 until this Follower leaves play. Yo, that's annoying. That's annoying. So you have to remove it with Spells, because it takes no damage. <laughs> It takes no damage from being hit by another follower. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Oh, man. Cool card. Really cool card. Um, the trading power of this is obviously not that good. And um, although it doesn't take any damage, that's cool. Uh, so it could be good against Forest, where they just play a bunch of A's, play Steadfast Samurai, and just run into them over and over. Uh, the Storm is not that much damage, again, and you're paying a lot for it, but that um, reduce damage to your leader effect is pretty neat. I just think that there's enough removal in rotation to deal with this pretty easily. Like, in the unevolved form, if you see of Sylvan, um, Predatory Might, uh, you know... I was just going to say... Uh, Usurping Spine Blade, is that still in? Is that Ultra Sphere or Omen? Surely that's Omen. That's rotating out, I guess. But still, lots of removal for this, but spending removal on a 2.11 one is kind of feels bad. Um, cool card, cool card, cool effect, annoying effect. I just don't really see it in Constructed, right? Right? Because it can be removed easily by constructed deck building that has just good early removal, especially Sylvan. Um, or any 2 play point DL3, like the Tyrannosaur. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say. Uh, moving on. Let me think about it a little more. Let me think about it a little more. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> just making sure. Uh, yeah. Assault Jaguar, 3 play point three two Silver Forest Craft Follower. Rush, last words, put a Greenwood Guardian into your hand. Good card. Especially, I'm, I'm really sold on the whole Greenwood Guardian thing. Um, now with the, uh, the cards that have been revealed up to this point so far. And I think uh, I'll talk about it a little more later as well in the next video, probably. Um, when it's up on the Twitter. All right. Because there's one card for Forest Craft that kind of ties the whole thing together <laughs> that hasn't been on the Twitter yet. Uh, Sword Whip Dread. Oh, please. Real quick. Yeah. 3 3 2 Rush. Solid card. And again, Greenwood Guardian stuff. Um, the more Greenwood Guardian cards there are, the better the archetype gets. And this is already a solid card that just gives you more pieces for that game plan. Plus, it's green, reminding me of He Man slash Beast Boy, which is pretty cool. Uh, sword Whip Dragoon, 2 on 1, Dragon Craft Bronze, Fanfare, deal 1 damage to 2 enemy followers, Enhance 6, deal 2 damage instead, gain plus 3 plus 3. Uh, it's actually not that bad of a card. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a double Elf Child May on two play points, 
And it's really not that bad. Like, imagine going second, they play a two-drop, you play this thing. You have tempo then. Um, for an aggressive dragon-style deck, this could be pretty cool. Then you could play, like, Flame Wing Might on it. Is this going to be better than Natura? I don't know. Probably not. But not a bad card in any case. The Enhanced 6, I don't know. You're paying 6 play points for a 4-4 four, four that deals 2 damage to random enemy followers. That seems kind of heavy. Uh... But if they happen to have, like, a four defense follower in front, that's nice. I don't know, though. I think the two-play point effect is better uh, in an aggro deck. Okay, moving along. Speaking of aggro, Ice Dancing Dragon, 2-2-2, two, 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 fanfare of Overflow's active for you, Gain Storm. All right. <laughs> now, if only there was a way to get this back for zero play points with Aqua Scale, and then, then we're talking, and then we can just start trading forever. No. Um, okay card, again, is Aggro Dragoncraft going to be better than Natura? I don't know, probably not, but here's hoping. Uh, it did get, Dragon did get some very good uh, tempo tools, like with Gario, of course, uh, Flame Winged Might, and now all these good early drops. Uh, Byron is still in the game, it's still in rotation, remember, keep in mind. Um, but yeah, you could also just splash Gario into Natura if you want for that overstat, right? So... Hello? Hello? Are we back? Are we back? Are we okay? My computer bugged out there for a second. Uh, hopefully the recording is okay. Anyway, because I cannot edit this because I'm in a hotel. Uh, Yuki Ona, 2-2-1, two, two, fanfare, select an enemy follower. It can't attack next turn. This is for Shadowcraft. Uh, enhance 8, gain plus 4, plus 4, and destroy that follower instead. The Enhance 8, I think, is way too heavy. Uh, the two-play point effect is okay. It's okay. I don't know. It seems like this is kind of a, a card that probably won't see play in rotation. That's because it's not actually dealing with the follower. It's just kind of delaying it. Uh, lock cards I love. Don't get me wrong. Um, but this just seems like a card that doesn't really fit in places. Of course, it does have that one defense stat, so you can use it in, like, one Shadowcraft. But again, do you want to? I don't know. Probably not. Mithra, Daybreak Deity, 6-5-4, Fanfare, draw three cards, and randomly discard two cards in your hand. Evolve, return an enemy follower or amulet into your opponent's hand. Really weird card. Let's you thin your deck a lot, which is nice, but it's kind of risky if you're running this in a combo deck that wants to thin your deck a lot, because of course you're discarding stuff, which is not good. Um, in Spartacus, you don't play this because it's competing with Spartacus, the six play point slot. The stat line isn't that good, and the evolve effect doesn't actually kill an enemy follower. Um, so I think this is not very good. I'm not impressed by Mithra. And do we have more? Do we have more? That's it. Okay, hopefully this recording did not just get absolutely wacky. I guess my computer froze there for a second. Uh, in any case, that's it for this video. I like it if you did. Don't if you didn't. Subscribe for more Shadowverse content and Ultimate Coliseum hype in the very near future. Of course, thank you to my wonderful patrons, patreon.com slash ignidious. If you'd like to support the channel as well, I would highly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. I'm speeding through the outro, outro so that I can end this video before my computer goes through any weird malfunctions, but I've completely wasted that entire purpose.